Hey, welcome back guys to um, another stream. We got fucking tournament up and running again. Um, gonna be recording the game audio slightly higher to uh, 40 minus 15. And if this sounds good when I go back and listen to this, we'll be using this if I want to keep streaming it. Um, so let's have a nice fun stream, guys. Let's uh, do a Q&A while I'm recording all this. Oh, hang on, went back to 39. Put it back up to 40. There we go. Alright, let's jump straight into it. Alright. Hey, what's going on, Tiff? What's up? Turn up. Um, wish Rinzel is probably sleeping now so he can join me. Unfortunately. What's up, Mitch? What's going on, buddy? Thanks for joining me, man. Appreciate it so much. Yeah. We're going to be playing some music later after I do this test here. Alright, here we go. Oh yeah. Yeah, miss. Oh, we got some Pokemon questions. Lovely. Oh yes, yes. Um, favorite um gym leader. Oh man. Probably, definitely. Uh, it, it's either. Definitely, um, uh, uh, whoa, yeah, seismic toss there for you guys, enjoy. Love doing that kick. And we got another one for you. I'm really getting the hang of this. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, um, oh yeah, I was supposed to answer the question, wasn't I? <laughs> Favorite gym leader? Um, God. Giovanni, hands down. Uh, either him or Gary, or Blue, whatever. Um, I think what makes Giovanni's role as the gym leader so, gym leader so powerful is that, it, I don't know if you guys have watched Pokemon Origins, but when you actually beat him, he actually remembers about, you know, how he actually loved Pokemon when he was a kid. And when you beat him, he kind of remembers that, and it's pretty sad, actually. Um, that's why I think his character is one of my favorite characters in the whole series, just because... You know, yeah, he's a bad guy, but deep down, there's a nice person somewhere. And I feel like, I feel like that's why he wanted to take the role as a gym leader, because deep down, he, he loved Pokemon or something like that. Um, even if he didn't want to admit it earlier. <laughs> there's plenty of videos about this that go in depth on it. And I got a feeling, uh, your rival, when you in, like, gold and silver version, he, he's actually the gym leader of Viridian City. I'm guessing he just wants, wanted to step back down and be a gym leader. I suppose. Um. I don't know, it's just kind of powerful to see him in that position. But Giovanni is definitely one of my favorite characters and, um, and whatnot. I just love his, just the way they, they wrote his character, it's so good. Booyah. Um. 
favorite Pokemon move? Uh, definitely um, Psychic or Thunderbolt. Um, Thunderbolt is just really reliable, and I just like Psychic just because it's it's really really powerful Psychic attack. Very decent. It's reliable. Well, at least it was. I'm not too, too sure how it holds up now. Uh, my history with Pokemon. All right. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you a rundown. Um, when I was like, I don't know, 10, 11, um, like 2000. That's I bought Pokemon Red version, and I played it on the emulator that's in Pokemon Stadium and I tell you what that was some of my most favorite moments of my childhood bar none sitting there playing that game um, that and getting gold and silver when it came out I mean getting gold version I should say whatever um, I mean Pokemon at the time was huge like it was absolutely massive like, the trading card game was everywhere, everyone was talking about it, media... Oh yeah, I don't know if I've told you guys this, but... Uh, around the year 2000, when I got into the, the Pokemon game... Um, they actually aired the first episode of the Pokemon anime on Channel 10 in Australia at 6pm at night. That's right, prime time! Television aired Pokemon. That's how fucking big that shit was back then. I mean, my god. It was absolutely massive. I could not... <laughs> to this day, I still cannot believe they did that. Um, absolutely incredible. It was a worldwide phenomenon. Um, I mean... <laughs> Pokemon is just... It's one of those... It's just one of those things that is you cannot... You know... Ignore it. It's the it's it's a, it's a huge franchise. Um, even now, it's raking in money like like an industrial vacuum cleaner sucking up a bank. Um. Uh, collision detection's a bit wonky when it comes to landing this super ultimate. Uh, well, you know, it's a bit tricky to land your ultimate. I'm pretty sure I hit him, that's the thing. Boom. Alright, that should be enough for the volume testing. Let's uh, chuck a song on now. Alright, so this record is actually by... Um, 12.43, which is basically a hip-hop duo. And, well, actually it's a trio. It's two MCs and a producer. Um, one of them is Soul8, who is the guy that raps... Who, um, and one of them is actually, well, it's actually Degaf, the guy, th that was his previous name, but now his name is Wolf. Um, Degaf was actually on that Noah's Art track, where he's like, you're tripping, dude, man, or whatever. Um, but he changed his name to Wolf, I just realized, well, I kind of already knew it, but I forgot it when I was talking about him at the time, I'm like, oh, that's my boy, Degaf. So, and, and Python does the production for the album. So it's basically Earth to Mar Mars Expressway plus um, Wolf, <laughs> which is you know kind of what they had before because Diga featured on a, a well he didn't I don't, he didn't actually rap on the Earth to Mars Expressway tra um, tracks as far as I can remember. Um, oh wait, I think he did. I don't know, but anyway. Um, this project is consistently them rapping on each track, I think. Um, so let's begin the album. This first track, the album is actually called Fly Fall. So, here we go. Make sure I'm capturing the audio. <laughs> and hopefully you guys can hear it too. Right, record starting. Let's just pause. Oh, that's right, I composed this intro for them, so I had a hand in the production as well. Gauge, 
I should play this, uh, play Zelda and play this record. That way, you, because like there's a lot of quiet moments in the game, you'll be able to hear the record better. Yeah, I actually composed and arranged the strings on this uh, intro. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I did take some influence from an old Italian composer. Actually, let's just mute the game audio altogether so you guys can listen to the record. Because that voice acting is getting really grating, honestly. Actually, no. Nah, whatever. Okay, now it's a little bit louder. Oh, we got some more questions. Cool. Hey, what's going on, Tiffany? Nice to see you up late. God almighty, what time is it where you are? <laughs> eh. I hope your family's doing alright in Texas. I heard about what's happening in uh, Houston or whatever. That's gonna suck. What the hell? He blocked it. <laughs> oh, well, I win anyway. I'm too hyped up right now. Oh, ah, he dodged it. Wow, he turned up the asshole level here. There we go. <laughs> Aims an opponent and performs an anti-air attack. <laughs> there we go. Soul 8. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, this is pretty much just Wolf and Soleil rapping. 
reflected light that's in my iris. It's my life, so why should I deny this? I'll, ju I'll just tell you right now. The pr their previously rap names were ED and Mr. DGAF. Now they're Salt, Salt 8, that's S O L number 8, and Wolf, which is W. It's an abbreviation. It's, you know, W O L F. It's just got dots in between the letters, it's like capital letters. These new rap personas were basically uh, made so they could take a new creative direction and, and be a little bit more experimental. Which works for them because um, these days it hel it's good to be experimental. I like the way this sounds already. I've only heard this like once. And I've forgotten how it sounds. Came out in July or something, I think. So I will publish this on Facebook whenever I can, and and everywhere else, just so I can show you guys. Because I did a little bit of production work on this, and I'm proud of it. So and I think I even feature on this record. I'm not sure 100%. <laughs> Didn't even need to use my special attack. Here we go. Perfect. <laughs> oh, hang on, I got some more questions. Sorry, guys. Um, favorite Pokemon memories. Um, beating the Elite Four for the first time on Pokemon Red version and completing, facing um, Red and Gold version. Like my God, that's one of the most epic moments in Pokemon history where you face yourself. I mean, my God. <laughs> Uh, God Almighty, that 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 was so epic. You know, my little twelve-year-old self, eleven-year-old self, seeing that, I'm like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it was yeah, something like that is just unheard of, you know, at the time. Although, uh, although it, ha it probably has happened in the past with other games, but like the way they did it in Pokemon was like, wow, you're fighting yourself. <laughs> well. Just incredible. Although, you know, the Pokemon that he had probably wasn't the ones that you had exactly. Yeah. I don't think I even had Pikachu in my party when I finished Red Version. I just had Mewtwo and my starter and, you know, Pidgeot and all, and that's pretty much all I used. And maybe some Dragonite here and there, or, um, you know, Mew, or, you know, maybe some other legendaries. I remember I liked Articuno a lot. I don't think I ever used it that much though. Um, I was more of a Mewtwo guy, that, you know. <laughs> I think uh, one of the, the, one of my favorite Pokemon besides Mewtwo and, you know, uh, would have to be, uh, you know, fuck, what am I talking about? Hang on. Alright, uh, so, oh god, ultimate. Yeah, I've got a lot of favorite Pokemon, um, but Mew Mewtwo's always been my number one, just because I just love Mewtwo as a character. And, but, um, I really liked using Venusaur and Sceptile. 
because they were my starters. And not, not a lot of people used um, Grass Pokemon as a starters. They either picked Blastoise or Charizard. And I picked Venusaur. You know, um, a lot of people just looked at me like, why did you get Venusaur? I'm like, I don't know, I, I just thought it looked cool and I like dinosaurs and, and all that, you know? And plus, they, they said it was a good Pokemon for beginners. And really, it, it makes mincemeat of the first two gym leaders, so honestly, what's the problem? <laughs> it was really, it, it made um, leveling up a lot easier for me. I didn't have to freaking struggle. Um, also, the healing moves that it could use were helpful during battle, like Mega Drain and all that. So... Yeah, I don't like using um, Empoleon, Napoleon, where it's called. It's just boring. I like Pikachu and Charizard. Empoleon. Yeah, this game you can only move four directions, so it's no use using the joypad. I mean, the uh, joystick. Left joystick. Stop guarding my attacks, you pussy. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was I was a I was a really big Mewtwo guy, um, and Venusaur guy, and um, I taught Venusaur Body Slam. And it, I thought it was pretty powerful for it, but Venusaur's special attack it was, it was where it shined. Honestly, um, I don't know why I, I always teach it Body Slam whenever I do a playthrough of Red version because that's just what I do. Really. I know it's probably not the best move to teach it, seeing its attack isn't that strong. As far as I can remember, but you guys can look that up. But anyway, if you care, <laughs> I know you probably don't really give a fuck, but um, I mean, I just I always used to teach a body slam with every playthrough I did when I was a kid for some reason. Um, but uh, you know, something with high attack would, would work better. I know that now, but back then I didn't have the slightest clue about that shit. Um, one thing, one another thing I remember about um. You know, red version was shit, and I was running out of synergy. Is Mewtwo? I just teach Psychic, Recover, Thunderbolt, and Amnesia. They were my Mewtwo's move set. Back then, Amnesia was incredibly broken because um, when you raise your special in Generation One, it raises special attack and defense at the same time. So not only are you harder to knock out if they're using special attacks at you, but you also output more damage. So, you know, using a special type move like Thunderbolt or Psychic will absolutely decimate the opponents. But even that even so that was the even though that was the case, I still had trouble beating a lot of Pokemon in Stadium uh, in Prime Cup. One in particular was that freaking gambler who kept one hit K KOing everyone. That is so freaking cheap. Oh, I remember that pissing me off. Um, I forgot what what time he pops up. But I think it's in the Prime Cup. I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think one of the one of the trainers you fight has a Mew or something. Anyway, um, yeah. I did not have Pokemon Stadium 2. No, I didn't have it, buddy. Um, I I just didn't. I don't know. I just didn't buy it. <laughs> it's not like I didn't like it. I didn't even know it existed. Well, a combination of that and I don't know. I just wasn't interested in it. Um, I heard it's good, so, you know, more power to you, if you played it and, and enjoyed it. I mean, god, it had to be good, I mean, it's Gen 2, Pokemon Stadium, come on. <laughs> Gen 2 is just amazing. Um... I remember Celebi being really hard to be able to. A lot of people in the kid play. A lot of kids in the playground would talk about Celebi, and I didn't have a fucking clue what it was. It was like like a Mew or something, like an evolved form of Mew. And they're like, "No, man, it's a time traveling Pokemon." I'm like, oh, "Okay then." <laughs> 
Um, my friend had like a Game Shock thing on the, in his Game Boy, and he just gave it to me because I I I didn't even know you know events were even a thing back then. I'm like, I'm like, where did you get this? one of my other friends? I used to know he's got a Sully V, and I'm like. Where the hell did you get that from? And he's like, oh, I got it in an event. And I'm like, what's an event? It's like, well, Toys R Us stores and, and like, you know, there's conventions in Brisbane that hold events where you can get exclusive access to, you know, really rare Pokemon and whatnot. Um, nowadays, you can just hack your fucking game to get the Pokemon now, but back then, you actually had to make sure you your ass turned up to these conventions and events around the city so you can actually get your hands on the the uh, Pokemon um, yeah no, if you just hack it like you do now <laughs> now nah, you guys know what I mean it was kind of uh, uh, game shark back then wasn't as well known as it is now I mean, I had, I, you know, um, I mean, I didn't have the slightest idea what the hell a Game Shark was, or Game Genie, or whatever. Actually, no, I'm talking out my ass. <laughs> God damn it. Ugh. I'm overthinking today. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. Me being a young kid, and I, I knew I knew that cheating devices were a thing, but you know, I didn't think about getting one. I didn't know where to get one to begin with, anyway. <laughs> Wait, you could get event Pokemon with cheating devices? Yeah, you could. Well, well, well screw me. Um, people used to hack back then as well, as well as today. So whatever. I don't know. I'm really. I'm trying to. I'm playing the game and I'm just talking at the same time. Sometimes I screw up. And it's normal. Anyway, uh. What was I. Okay, another question. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, Jesus. I am not used to having so much activity on my streams. I know that's sad to say, but <laughs> it's true. Oh, come on. I just want to size me toss you, buddy. Will you let me do that? I'll be your friend. Uh, what do we got here? <laughs> My thoughts on Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Great games, underrated. Um, especially Emerald version. I've never actually played that though. But I noticed in like the first three generations. I know. I, I think I said about said this in like a previous stream where I was playing Pokemon. Um, I forget which one it was. Um, but um. I notice every like game like yellow, crystal, or emerald, when a Pokemon appears it has like an animation, but the other games didn't have an animation. Um, as far as I can remember. That was a trend for a while. I, I don't know if that if that trend stopped in Diamond and Pearl because I've never played those games. But um, that was a thing. <laughs> every um third game that would come out for each generation there would there would be animations. Um, I don't know why that was the case. I, I guess like emerald and, and yellow and crystal were like the definitive versions of the game of the you know the game, the generation. Um, I guess that was what they were trying to do. It's like how you got definitive versions of games now or whatever. Um, we're only half an hour in. Um. <clears throat> um. Yeah, Ruby Sapphire definitely really underrated game. Generation three as a whole is underrated because everyone kind of just put down po Pokemon after Gold and Silver came out and Crystal. So I was one of the few people that still followed Pokemon because I, I enjoyed playing it, you know. And when I got Ruby and Sapphire and realized I couldn't transfer any Pokemon over to it, I was I was kind of bummed out. 
Um, I think that's probably why people just gave up on Pokemon because they were like, oh, I can't transfer from Pokemon, oh, screw it. But, um, you know, I started a new adventure with Sceptile and everything, and I was perfectly fine with that, and I think it's one of the best games. I mean, you know, you couldn't travel to another region or anything, like you couldn't gold version, but, um, you know, it's really, f it, it just had a certain charm about it, you know? Um, just the music, um, just having this really upbeat, like, old school snare drum and really, really catchy music just gave it a little bit of a charm, you know, and, and also the, uh, there was no day and night in it either as far as I can remember, but, you know, that didn't really matter. You could grow plants, you could, um, um... I should definitely play a Moga, uh, a Omega Ruby and Sapphire sometime. Um, yeah, thanks for reminding me about that. Um, actually, I kind of want to play all the Pokemon games I haven't played yet. Jesus, if I'm not paying attention, I'm getting my butt whooped. Um, so, you know, um... Hmm. Uh. Oh really? You had no idea Game Shark existed when you were a kid? Hmm. Well maybe I was kinda right about that how a lot of kids know how to hack Pokemon nowadays and back then. Well, I mean the internet wasn't really preve pre prevalent in like the early two thousands, so you know, you couldn't really go on the internet and look up Game Shark codes, could you? You have to get a magazine or something? I don't know. I think back then people preferred to go to events rather than cheating. Nowadays people just couldn't give a shit. Yeah, so I guess I was kinda right. I don't know man, it's <laughs> it's it's hard not to talk out of my butt sometimes when it when you're streaming and playing a game and answering questions. Um Let's see here. Oh man, I gotta I gotta tell you the story. Uh, you know when the Pokemon first movie came out, like it was at the hype of the anime and trading card game stuff. Um, I remember one of my friends at school tried to like trade their Mew card, the ancient Mew card they got out from seeing the, when, when you got, when you went to see the movie in theaters, you got the ancient Mew card. And this dude was trying to freaking sell it, uh, trade it for like really rare Pokemon, like shiny Pokemon and or whatever. I'm like, dude, everyone freaking got that card. It's not worth shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was hilarious. I mean, early version of um, um, what do they call them? Scalpers, money, uh, <laughs> pretty much. Um, you see, scalpers, but he's selling like rare collectors edition consoles nowadays, or whatever. Uh, that shit's really annoying. I'm not gonna lie. I think that's what they're called, scalpers. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you give a shit, I don't know why I care. Uh, anyway, um, come on, keep firing questions at me. This is fun. Favorite Pokemon uh, theme. Uh. Probably uh, Red's theme and the rival theme for Pokemon Red and Red version and Gold version, respectively. I mean, that. The, <laughs> I mean, I think Champion Lance has the same theme as Red, I think. I don't know. Um, I mean, the, that is just completely epic. <laughs> That's just absolutely epic. Um, and hearing um, your rival's themes like, or whatever it is, I don't know. Uh, just all those themes are just really memorable. Just completely epic. Oh yeah, I also own Fire Red. So, so, what do I understand is Fire Red and Leaf Green are basically uh, remakes of the original Red and Green. 
um, because in in Japan the games were called Red and Green or whatever, and then an American release was Red and Blue. I think they fixed a lot of the game breaking glitches that the original games had when they um, or whatever. So um, I'm just going by memory here. By the way, guys, I could be wrong. Um, so yeah, I I had Fire Red version. I still have it, by the way. I you know I. <laughs> I still own a lot of the games I talk about, so, um, except for gold version, that's sadly gone, I don't know what the hell happened to that, I think I lost it or it got stolen, whatever. Um, so, what I, what I can remember from Fire Red, it was just basically a, uh, Game Boy Advance version of Red version. Um, everything checks out, there's just a few new things put here and there just to make it a little bit more interesting. But other than that, it's literally the same game. They added, like, this new area called the Sevi Islands, I think it was? I'm really going off memory here, but it was nice to see them the, add a new area. I think it's supposed to be based off the Orange Islands, like, from the anime. Um, don't quote me on that, I'm not 100% sure, but... I mean, it was interesting. Oh, Jesus, I completely missed that. Um, yeah, I really like that game. Oh, that's right, you could actually trade Pokemon from Fire Red to uh, Ruby version, right? So, it'd just be nice if you could trade your original Red version ones over, unless you... Wait a minute, you could you? That would've been cool if you could. Um... Oops, that was crap. Oh, I made a bunch more questions. Um... What do I think about the newer Pokemon games? Uh, I've never played a lot of the newer ones except for X and Y. I definitely want to check out Omega, Ruby and Sapphire. Um, Heart Gold and Soul, Soul Silver is also another um, set of games I wanted to check out. Or, or just want to check out Heart Gold. Because um, I had Gold version. They're on the DS, right? If they are, then, you know, interesting. I don't have a DS, like an original DS, but I do have a free DS, which I think you can play original DS games on. I'll, I'll definitely check it out and try to stream it or something. Eventually, I'll get around to it. I'm currently less playing Ruby version off an emulator, mainly because I really don't want to fucking capture my Game Boy Advance. I don't even know if that thing even works anymore, and why the hell would I invest money in that? <laughs> You know, plus emulator quality is much better. Um, let me see here. Yeah, once I finish that let's Me and Mark are supposed to finish Majora's Mask, by the way. Probably one of the most tedious let's plays we've ever worked on. Um, mainly because we I pretty much forgot everything about the game. Um, I only have... I've, mainly because... Um, I didn't recently get into the game until late. Really late, like 20, uh, like <laughs> really late, like 2015. I don't know if I've said different in the past, but I, I I have vague memories of it when I was a child. I think I may have played it when I was a child, but I, I didn't get into the game until recently, like 2015 or whatever. And then I started to appreciate it like a lot, just because of how great it was designed, how great it was designed. Um, and I thought, at, even now, I still think it's better than Ocarina of Time. And that, that's, not a, that's not a popular opinion to have, but... I mean, that's just how I feel. Actually, you know what, I think they're both tied as, as good as one another. They're both incredible. Woo! 
Boom. That works. And one thing I, uh, yeah, um, why I like gold version so much, um, <coughs> I don't know, there's just something about it, there's like a really somber vibe with the game that just makes it really appealing to me now and when I was a kid, um, really dark game for the time. I just like the concept of traveling back to the Hoenn re- Hoenn re- um, not Hoenn, to, to the, uh, Kanto region from Johto. And being able to fight all the gym leaders again and whatnot. And get 16 badges. I mean, that was just- wow. That much content in the Game Boy Color game is just- wow, man. Incredible. I tried to walk and it wouldn't do it. There we go. Get him, Lapras. Boom. <laughs> ah, we, we're at 42 minutes. We'll go for an hour. I'm running out of, um, this is the final battle I think I can have until the demo craps itself and goes, screw you, buddy, you've played enough. I don't think Nintendo will mind that I'm doing this. I mean, I'm 100% buying this. And to prove it, I will be streaming this constantly when it comes out for the Switch. Maybe they'll alter the sound leveling as well, so I might have to test the audio as well again. God. Until that time comes, I'm stuck with the demo anyway, so... Oh, I played everything available in the demo version, apparently. Well, I guess we're done here, so let's do a Q&A, guys. Hit me. Alright, guys. Ask away. My top, 
my top three Pokemon games. Wow. Um, what do you mean? Uh, like red, blue, yellow, gold, and all that, or do you mean like any game, like Stadium or um, you know, Coliseum and all, and all that? All of them? Okay, well... Number three... Pokemon Snap. I just love that game to death. Number two... Um, Pokemon Stadium and number three Pokemon Gold. That simple. Yeah, that's a fair... Uh, you know, I kind of want to put Pokemon Puzzle Challenge as, uh, instead of Stadium because I love that so much, but... You know, Stadium, you know, I grew up on that, you know, so... If I want to give some honorable mentions, um... Pokemon Puzzle Challenge... Um... Wait, what's this song? I've heard this track before. Oh, it's, um... Fire. <coughs> um, what's another good Pokemon game I love? Well, you know what? This game I'm playing now might actually <laughs> become an honorable mention. I mean, my god. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm out of the things right now. Alright, another question. Um... My least favorite Pokemon. Um, my God. Uh, I really, really, really hate Zubat. So yeah. But it's fully evolved form. Crobat is amazing. So you know I can't really hate it that much. Um, I, 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 another one. I think Mr. Mime is just a really stupid. <laughs> Pokemon, it just, it just, it just seems like a joke, <laughs> like some sort of really obscure, like, Japanese joke, I don't know, <laughs> some sort of joke that, that, you know, that was something, is based off, like, a Japanese, um, you know, some something, just, <laughs> just some sort of Asian, um, fuckery, I don't know, <laughs> Um, it, it, it just looks so weird. It, it, it just looks like a joke. Uh, another one I don't like. Um, I didn't really care much for, um, I don't know. I, I, I did not like, um, Magic Carp. J mainly because um, it's just a real pain in the ass to evolve. That's one reason why I don't like it. Gyarados is really strong, but Magikarp is really, really weak. So you know, I just don't like Magikarp. It's just, it's just a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, I, d I just don't like Mr. Mime. <laughs> Man, I, I, yeah, it's funny you say that. Mr. Mime is probably based off some sort of joke. Um, like some dude in Japan dressed up like a like some weird clown or something, and they made a Pokemon about it. <laughs> based on him or something. That's what I was trying to say before. Um, I don't know. It's some sort of weirdness. Um... Now that you mention it, there's a lot of forgettable Pokemon in Generation 2. Um,
this is actually a pretty long record. We're only at um track uh, nine out of twelve now. Well, it's probably because I didn't stop playing this until after a little bit. Otherwise, I'd probably be at like track ten by now or something, um, or eleven. Um. Well, you know, I guess as a, as a franchise, I just really like Pokemon. It's just really appealing to me. I probably don't like it now as much as I did when I was a kid, but you know, whenever a game like this comes out, I jump all over it just because you know it takes me back to my childhood when I just used to sit at home and just fire up Red version and Gold version and Ruby and Fire Red and Fire Red is pretty much where I put the series down. I I skipped over Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, or Platinum or whatever. And I picked the game back up at X and Y because I'm like, holy shit, this is a 3D Pokemon game. I must play this. And I played that and I'm like, hell yeah, I want more than Omega Ruby or whatever came out. And I'm like, hell yeah, I want to play that as well. Um, I like how they made it easier to train and easier to get shiny Pokemon as well, somewhat. <laughs> it's still a pain in the ass, but you can still... Um, it's definitely a lot easier than before. Oh yeah, I gotta tell you the story before I forget. Um, this is another reason. I actually, yeah, I was okay. So in my hometown of Redcliffe, um, I used to go to this place called the Leeds Club, and I used to just bring my Game Boy with me, and just go to go there and just play. Um. No wait, I think it was at the RSL. I'm not sure. I was either there or the Leeds Club. Um, I was just sitting there, then all of a sudden I saw a shiny tether, tether, Teddy Ursa appear. It sparkled. I'm like, what's going on here? Did that thing just sparkle? Because I had no idea what a shiny Pokemon was at the time. Um, the thing fucking sparkled at me, and I'm like, that was weird. I might catch it. And the thing fled. The damn thing fled. I, I didn't really think much of it at the time, but my friend told me that it was a shiny Pokemon. And I'm like, God damn it! They're extremely rare, too. You know, at that... <laughs> I was just sitting there playing it while waiting for lunch or something, and the thing appeared. And it disappeared. And... It's just, it just, it just happened just like that, out of nowhere. That was my only shiny Pokemon encounter I can remember from the, from the original, from back then when I used to play. Um, I mean, everyone had the red Gyarados, of course, but yeah, I remember that really vividly, kind of. Well, I don't even remember where the hell I was at the time, but I was at a club somewhere in Redcliffe. Um, Yeah, I only just recently moved there to Brisbane, like, at the end of last year. Um, I, actually, I actually go back and forth between Los Angeles and Brisbane now, basically. I want to I wanna be able to permanently go to LA one day and, like, get into my music, do some music there and whatnot. You know, I can always dream. I mean, currently my finances are kind of shot right now, so, you know, I won't be going anywhere anytime soon, but maybe eventually. <clears throat> I'm, just, I'm just saving up as much money as I can. Pretty much cut off all these people that have been begging me for money. They're like, Matt, can you lend this money? Can you lend me money? And I'm like, dude, I, it's, you know what? There's being nice to people, then there's being gullible. You know what I mean? These people don't want to help themselves. Why do I, you know, why bother with them? I hate people like that. I mean, it's one thing to, like, donate money to someone or a foundation or whatnot, but if someone's just asking you for money just because, like, they claim that, um, you know, they're, they're gonna, their life's gonna be over <laughs> if they don't have money, then, you know, don't give them money. If they can't fend for themselves, they don't deserve to, you know, um, exist normally. That's just the way I see it. That's, I got no sympathy for a lot of the homeless people in Brisbane. Um, because they were like, drugged out, heroin addicts. You know, they did it to themselves. You know, no one forced them to stick the needle in their arm. 
Um, I mean, look, don't get me wrong, I think it's terrible that this shit happens to people, but, you know, it's just common sense. <laughs> if someone gives you heroin that can potentially get you hooked and kill you, why, why accept it? <laughs> I mean, this shit's no joke. It's actually one of the highest. It's, it's actually one of the most deadliest drugs out right now. Um. Wow, this stream got dark quick. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, that's the internet. What are you gonna do? <coughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Hopefully, this cold goes away. I mean, my god. Not cold, I mean, my flu. This flu. Ugh. Um, let me see here. Yeah, um. I used to like breeding Pokemon in Ruby version, like, I'd just make countless copies of Pokemon. I think I bred like three Gardevoirs. Which is weird because I actually bred, um... I think I, I bred all types of Pokemon together. Um... Like, I think, I think at one point I bred a Spoink or a Grumpig with a Gardevoir. And the Gardevoir came out with really high special attack or something, I can't remember what happened, but... Yeah, it's fun to mix and match. Actually, I don't think Grumpig, Grumpig had really high special attack. I know, I didn't know much about breeding at the time. I didn't look, look too deep into it. It was fun to try to figure it out myself, but even then I was completely ignorant to what you really need to do to get the best results. We're almost at one hour, guys, so... Five more questions at me. Am I going to be streaming often? Sure, why not? How's my mum? Oh, she's still in hospital right now. <coughs> right now, she's actually, um... It's actually gotten pretty bad for her now. She's got, she's got spots on her lungs. I don't know what they are, they think they're blood clots, and I'm hoping they're blood clots. Um, but, uh, you know. You know, she's, she's like, she's smacked death in the face several times in her life, so I reckon she'll get past this. She just laughs in death's face all the time. I mean, she had a brain tumor in 2002, she's had diabetes, like, ever since I was born. She's got kidney disease. Like her legs, inf you know, inflate all the time. Got gimme in her legs. She, she's got all sorts of problems and she's still sitting here smiling. It's incredible. Inspirational shit, man. Take what you can and hold close and hold close and pray to the stars that you can hold close. That you can hold close. Protect yourself when Jupiter's gone Serving the cells with Lucifer's song Maybe the purpose is well and beyond Maybe we're children of hell of a gods Living in paradise, never be wronged Awaken to paradise burned Ashes falling from sky Blackness follows the night Atlas swallows the pride Space indifferent to time Thoughts swirling your mind Like an elephant in the tribe Under the ground we survive Skies become blue with time Blossoming into a smile Comments you passed in a while Blood resets the cycle Fire will fight up the mind Ideas born from life yeah, we're gonna end this now, guys. Um, let me just turn down the music. I'm falling slow to the atrophy You gotta go, you oughta know My masterpiece finna rock the boat But it's like the drive, I done lost control Like you feeling till I reach the goal Not um. brother, I'm feeling like I'm cursed To forever fall, never fall yeah, well, time will tell us the volume levels were good. If not, I'll just dial it back down to 39, I guess. Um, so anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. Alright. 
Yep, you guys are all good now. Alright. Yeah, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I'll be I'll be online often. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for joining me. <clears throat> Let me just get out of this now. What is software? Eight o'clock already. God. Oh well, guys. Thanks for joining me. And um, I haven't managed to finish the album. Maybe next time. There's only two tracks left. Well, this one and two tracks. Anyway guys, thanks for joining me, and as per usual, have yourselves a good night, and take care. I'll be back tomorrow. Peace out.